Hi, I'm Dylan, the host of your school news report. We have a full show for you today, so let's get started. We begin our show with breaking news from from the kindergarten yard. After months and months of wondering what happened to all those disappearing soccer balls, it seems the mystery has been solved. The sixth, seventh, and eighth grade grade kids have been complaining for some time that every day they would take out their soccer balls at recess, and day after day those balls would go missing. Children were getting grounded by their parents for losing their soccer balls. Many children even reportedly went without desserts for days. We go live to our reporter on the scene, Sean, with the latest news on this story. Sean, is it true that the soccer ball mystery has been solved? Yes, it is true. The mystery has been solved. The kindergarten playground is separated from the big kids' playground by only a short fence. After weeks of having their play interrupted by flying soccer balls, the kindergarten kids had enough. The missing balls were found in a rarely used closet in the school's basement. It seems that the little kids were fed up, and every time a big kid would kick their ball into a kindergarten yard, the little kids would take it down, take it down to the closet in the basement. When the custodian went down there last night to retrieve some new desks and chairs, he was knocked down by an avalanche of soccer balls. There's no telling how many balls are down there. Our principal is still counting at them as we speak. Dylan, back to you. Wow, this is great news for all those kids that lost their soccer balls. Sean, have you spoken to the kindergarten kids? Do they have any comments? I sure did, and they released this statement. We're sick and tired of having our recess interrupted by those big kids. Our sandcastles are constantly being knocked down by flying soccer balls. And we had to take matters into our own hands. We warned you this would happen. We did what we had to do. And if you want your frisbees back, you'll stop flinging them into our yard, too. Wow. Those little kids need business. (laughs) And now we'll learn about... The weather forecast with our weather reporter, Owen. It's going to be sunny for most of the day today. It might rain at last recess, so students are advised to start thinking about their indoor recess activity. If you have homework, it's a good idea to do it during indoor recess because it's going to be a beautiful evening. It's a perfect night for asking your parents to take you out for ice cream. Dylan, back to you. Thank you, Owen. Speaking of recess, let's go now to our recess reporter, Mark. What is up to our recess these days, Mark? Well, Dylan, I spent recess outside today, and there are many different activities going on at all the same time. The younger kids seem to enjoy running around and screaming. The third, fourth, and fifth graders enjoyed soccer, tag, and skipping. The older kids played football, talked with their friends, and even tried to cram in some last-minute studying. Sounds like a nice time today at recess. Were there any incidents today? Well, there was one incident today with little Susie in the first grade. She was heartbroken when her jacket just walked away on her. As you know, it was warm out today. Little Susie took her jacket off and laid it on the ground. She thought she was laying it on a rock, but it turns out it was a turtle. At some point, when no one was paying attention, that that turtle who was wearing Susie's jacket, walked away. Susie was very upset, but the emergency came to a quick end when she looked just a bit to her left. She spotted the jacket moving along. The turtle was returned to the kindergarten class, and Susie got her jacket back. So, it was a happy ending for everyone. Dylan, back to you. Well, that's good news for Susie and Rocky the turtle. Thank you for that report, Mark. And now, to our special guest. We have an interview with famous bubblegum bubble blower, Brooke. Welcome to our show, Brooke. Thanks. It's great to be here. I see you're not chewing gum right now. That's right. I only chew gum one hour prior to competitions. And I hear you have a big one coming up this weekend. That's right. I'm defeating my title as the number one bubble blower in the country. You must be very nervous. You've won this competition three years in a row. Yes, I'm looking forward. Wait. I'm a 
bit nervous. There's a lot of great competitors out there. Our school is having its very own competition this afternoon, and I hear you'll be judging the bubbles. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. I hear your school has some great bubble blowers. Well, we'll find out this afternoon, won't we? Thanks for stopping by, Brooke. Thank you for having me, Dylan. And now we go to our reporter, who is live on location at the Bubblegum Bubble Blowing Competition. Hi, Dylan. I'm here on the playground at the Bubble Competition, and let me tell you, there are there are some very talented bubble, bu bubble blowers out there. Kids of all grades have been working hard to bu blow <laughs> bubbles in and to win this competition. Can you tell our listeners about the grand prize this year? It's a, it's a year's supply of super duper great bubble gum. Wow! What a great prize! It sure is. I'm told that Kevin in first grade is the one to look out for. Apparently this kid can blow a bubble that's bigger than his head. Well, Vicky, it's a great day for a competition. Good luck to all the competitors. We'll be right back with the with the lunch report after this commercial break. Did your crazy kid get gum stuck in your hair after a bubble blowing competition? Have you tried everything to get it out and nothing worked? Well, come down to the barber shop. I'll take care of your kid's head just for 99 cents. I'll cut the gum out of your kid's hair and give him a lollipop. Right now, we're running a buy one and get one free special for those of you with more than one kid with gum in your hair. So come down to the barber shop for 99 cents. Haircut today. Is it your day for show and tell and you forgot? Do you need something interesting to show your class? Are you looking for a fantastic story to share? If you said yes to any of these questions, you need to come to my locker for just two dollars. I will lend you something interesting or give you a copy of an exciting story to share. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. I have everything from shark's teeth to an old cell phone from the 80s. I also have copies of great stories my grandpa told me about in the olden days. You'll have your classmates on the edge of their seats with my show and tell products. Just come on over to locker number 146. My name is Addison and I am your show and tell expert. And we're back. It's time for the lunch report with Sarah. Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Dylan. I'm standing here with JD, who is shocked and devastated. JD, you ordered your pizza for lunch today, and you were disappointed. Can you tell our listeners why? Yes, I ordered a cheese pizza, and I and there was a piece of pepperoni on it. I'm stunned. I'm shocked. What on earth did you do? I peeled it off and put it on a plate. Could you still eat the pizza? Well, yes, I ate it, but I wasn't happy. Will you ever be able to eat pizza again? I will, Sarah. I will. <laughs> well, there you have it, listeners. Hopeful, we can all learn from this, and in the future, if there is pepperoni on your cheese pizza, we'll do what this brave person did and peel it off. Thank you, Sarah. A good lesson for us all. And now, we go to the library report with Rowan. I'm here with our librarian, Joanne. Hello, Joanne. How are you, Joanne? Oh, hello there. I was just reading. I'm a librarian, you know. Yes, I know. I'm here to talk to you about the new books in the library. Oh, we have so many wonderful new books. We have books about sports, books about dolls, books about adventures to outer space. Whoa, so many great things to read. <coughs> oh, yes, we have over 50 new books in the library. Book, books... Books about sports, books about dolls, books about... Yes, you mentioned that. What are the most popular books in the library right now? Well, that would be our bubblegum books. It seems that everyone wants to learn about how to blow a, a big bu bubble with their bubble gums. Oh, yes, the bubble blowing competition is a big event at our school. Yes, and all of the kids want to win that grand prize. Well, thank you for letting us visit you today. You're welcome. Be sure to come by the library and check out one of our new books. We have books about sports, books about dolls, books about... Yes, you mentioned that. Thank you, Joanne. Back to you, Dylan. Thank you, Rowan. There is certainly a lot happening at our school. Now, it's time for a weekly sports report. Christian and David are here with the big news on that kickball game this afternoon. 
Hello, sports fans. I'm here with David, and we're coming to you live from the kickball field. It's a great day for some kickball, isn't it, David? It sure is. The Red Team is looking good this year. It looks like they recruit some new players, and that one big kid has new shoes, which seem to be making a real difference in his kicks. Yes, indeed. And did you notice that little girl from fourth grade? She sure has a powerful kick. I heard she kicked the ball so hard it landed on the school's roof. I was speaking with her earlier, and she said that the secret to her success is ballet lessons. She said her dance lessons classes have really helped her on the kickball field. Well, right now, the red team is in the lead. The blue team just stands to be struggling all season long. And judging by that boy sitting out there on the field reading the book, I'd say they certainly have some work to do. Doesn't he realize he's the pitcher? I don't think so, Christian. He just pulled out a sandwich and his iPad. I think this season will be in real trouble for the blue team this year. Well, it looks like it'll be another win for the red team. Back to you, Dylan. Thank you, Christian and David. Now, let's find out what's cooking with Abby. Hello, all you fellow chefs out there. Today, we're making jam sandwiches. First, you'll need some extra special jam. It's better if a grandma made it. Next, get yourself some fresh bread. Spread the jam on the bread, and if you are allowed, cut the sandwich in half. Grab yourself a glass of milk, and you'll have a great lunch or snack. Bon appetit! Wow, that sounds delicious. Thank you, Abby. Can you tell the listeners why the jam is better if it's made by a grandma? Yes, I can, Dylan. Everything is better when your grandma makes it. I see. Thank you, Abby. And now we go to our art reporter, Grace. Grace, over to you. Thank you, Dylan. I'm here in the art room with famous artist, Andrea. Andrea has been working very hard on a new sculpture. What can you tell us about your latest project? You tell me. What do you see when you look at my magnificent sculpture? Um, well, it's very lumpy. Is it a piece of chewed up bubble gum? It certainly is not. Try again. Okay, is it a pile of Play-Doh left on the counter? It's not Play-Doh. I'm a world famous artist. How dare you say my work looks like a lump of Play-Doh. Oh, I'm really sorry. I just thought it looked like a bowl of mashed potatoes. Don't you see? Mashed potatoes. Oh, of course, mashed potatoes. I can't believe I got that wrong. Well, that's all the time we have right now. Thank you for this interview, Andrea. You are a very talented artist. Yes, I am. Dylan, back to you. Thank you, Grace. This just in. The bubble, <coughs> bu blow, the bubble blowing competition has just begun, and it looks like we might have a new champion. Let's go live to our reporter, Logan. Thank you, Dylan. I'm here live at the Bubble Boy competition, and it's looking like we new have a new champion this year. Callie from fourth grade has just won the classroom competition and is ready to go on to the next level. Callie, look, how are you feeling today about taking all the grades, all the kids in your grade, not just your own class? Well, Jamie, I, my name is Logan. All right, your name is Logan. I'm nervous. I've never even planned on entering the competition, Taylor. It's Logan! Can you tell our listeners when you decided to enter the competition? Well, Sam, there I was sitting on the bus this morning thinking about my life and the direction I wanted it to go in. So I, so I thought to myself, hey, why not try bubble blowing? And here I am. You mean you just decided this morning to join the competition? My name is Logan, by the way. That's right, just this morning. That's right, Robin, just this morning. My name is Logan. It's really not hard. A name to remember. And it's even on my name tag. Logan spells L-O-G-A-N. My name is Logan. Sorry, what did you say? Oh, never mind, gotta run. It's my turn to compete. See you later, Alex. Oh. <sighs> well, Dylan, back to you. Thanks, Alex. Oops. I mean, Logan. And now we go to the weekly Lost and Found report. 
Hunter, you're our recent detective. What what items were you able to locate this week? Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Wait, no, just cut it out. No, Miss I know what to do. Yes, cut out now. Let's see. Huh? When, uh, when Logan and Kelly were reading, it went back to like the lock screen. So I don't know if they recorded it and if it's still recording. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's still recording.